my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm starting a very exciting reading vlog. <laughs> I'm actually filming this intro after the reading vlog is already over, but I wanted to let you know that in this reading vlog I read some of my most highly anticipated books of the year, which include Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, it includes One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston, it includes Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and it also lastly includes Local Woman Missing, and this one wasn't originally on my most anticipated, but when this book came out in the month of May, I had so many friends giving this book five stars and so many people loving the hell out of it and, and recommending it to me that I was like, now it is one of my most anticipated because of you! Sorry, the light, the lighting is just very strange in my room right now. If only the new uh, Riley Sager was in this video, then I feel like this would be a pretty conclusive list of my absolute most anticipated books of the year, but that one's gonna have to wait, unfortunately. These are all of my highly, highly anticipated reads, and I'm so excited to have completed this reading vlog reading all of them, so let's jump back to about a week ago when I started. It's pretty late at night right now, it's like midnight, but I wanted to update you that I have got 50 pages into Project Hail Mary, and so far I'm already really loving this book. This book, all I understood about it going into it was that it was gonna follow this astronaut and it was like a sci-fi book and it took place in space, like that's all I really knew about it going in. This book, it just has that same like really funny comedic writing that The Martian had, which I really love. I don't know, there's just something about Andy Weir's writing, it's just so funny, but it's like scientific at the same time, like some parts like are so sciencey, it still is like going way over my head, but the character is just so likable, which I feel like is exactly how I felt about The Martian so far. We're just following this astronaut who wakes up and he doesn't know where he is, he has like no memories, he doesn't even know his own name, and he doesn't know where he is. And we kind of follow him during the first 50 pages. I mean, the description kind of like tells you what you need to know, but it's kind of cool because since I didn't really read the description right before I just started this, I was even more surprised by things that have happened in this first 50 pages already. But basically the general premise of what's happening is that we're following this astronaut who wakes up alone on this like spaceship and his crew members next to him are dead and he doesn't know what happened, he doesn't know anything. And it's kind of interesting because we are starting to get some flashbacks as he's like starting to remember certain things. But I just really like the way this is written. I think it's just really funny so far for like such a dire situation for this main character to be in. It's just really like lighthearted for the most part and really funny. There was one scene already that made me laugh out loud for like two minutes straight and like books never make me laugh like this. I was literally laughing out loud imagining this situation that happened to this character in the first 50 pages. Like that is so rare for me to actually laugh over a book like this, like, I don't know. So it, it's safe to say so far, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, right now it's midnight, so I don't know if I'm gonna be reading anything tonight, but um, tomorrow in the morning, I don't have a ton going on, so I think I'm gonna try to get into more of this tomorrow. Good morning. It has been like two days, I think, since I last updated you, um, but I wanted you to know that I got 136 pages into Project Hail Mary as of last night and I'm still 
absolutely loving this. I don't know why it's taking me like a minute to get through this beginning part, but I think it's because the writing style is definitely like an, an adjustment because it's getting more and more sciency as we're going. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it still. There's some parts that are going like way over my head with the science that I'm just kind of like skimming through, but the comedy aspect of this book is really great. Like the main character is just so funny and I just really love his sense of humor. I don't know, I'm so excited. This book is so thick too. It's like almost 500 pages, so it's probably gonna take me a minute to get through this, but I'm hoping to read a good chunk of it maybe tonight and tomorrow because I don't work tomorrow. I'm only working a half shift today, so I only work until four, um, but then my sister's home tonight, so I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to read tonight. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I just got off of work and I drove all the way back to where I live, which is like about a 20 to 30 minute drive. I just realized that I left my fucking book at work, which is so annoying. Ugh, like I'm not driving back, but I mean, it's fine because Obed works tonight. You know, I live with Obed, Rachel's boyfriend. So I asked him if he could bring it home later tonight, but now I'm like, God damn it. Cause I wanted to read, you know, some of it tonight, this afternoon. So like, ugh. <laughs> Holy shit. 33. Oh my god. Uh, this lighting is exceptional. <laughs> um, it's one of those nights where we're just gonna go to Dairy Queen, you know? Dude, I crave Dairy Queen blizzards like so often now. It's like, it's bad. Look at Tinky. Look at him. Look at him. Oh. Got that uh, cookie dough blizzard. And we're rewatching Friends again from the beginning <laughs> because ever since the Friends reunion, it just feels necessary and right. So. Uh, hi, it's the next morning, and last night, <laughs> Obed forgot to bring the book back from my restaurant, so I'm going to Barnes and Noble to buy a new copy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I am gonna go to Barnes & Noble right now because I wanna see if they have any of my other most anticipated books available. I'm thinking of getting either Local Woman Missing or One Last Stop, even though One Last Stop doesn't technically come out until tomorrow, but sometimes my Barnes & Noble puts out some copies early. And I know you're probably like, bitch, you're so dramatic, just go drive back and pick up your book, but like, it's kind of a ways away and I am going to my parents for dinner tonight, which is like in that direction. So I am gonna go back and pick it up later tonight. But for this whole day, I wanted to like sit and read a book all day today. So that's why I'm gonna go and see if they have one of my other most anticipated books. Maybe I can get a jump start on that one and then read more of Project Hail Mary tonight. I don't know yet, we'll see. <laughs> So they didn't have the Casey McQuinston yet, or at least I couldn't find it anywhere, but I did end up getting Local Woman Missing. I think I'm going to just start this today and try to finish it today because it looks like it's pretty, like not like it's short, but like it looks like it's really easy to read. And I'm just really curious about this one. So hyped. And then because they didn't have the Casey McQuinston, I decided to get Tools of Engagement because this is one that I've been hearing about so much, mostly on Instagram and especially from like Chandler. Like I know Chandler really loved this one and ever since I saw her like five star review for it, I've just been really interested in it. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Tessa Bailey's other book, Fix Her Up though. So that's kind of the reason why I've still been putting it off because I'm like, will I like this though? I don't know. But it does sound um, really interesting because it's like hate to love. It's like two enemies team up to flip a house together and the love interest name is Wes which like low-key that's like one of my favorite names so uh so pretty excited about this one I don't know if I'll read this book for this vlog but regardless I would like to read this book really soon I'm gonna get an acai bowl because I had a coupon for like you know if you go and buy so many acai bowls in a row you get like a deal where you get one for free so I'm getting my free one this morning and then we shall read okay um it's like 1 30 in the afternoon right now I came home and then I had to edit a video really quick and do a few things. But now it's 1.30 and I have until about like 
four to read so i think i am gonna start local woman missing and like i don't know maybe i should read on the patio because it's like a decently nice day out and maybe i should like stop being such a hermit and stop being indoors so much like it's nearly summer now i think i might read out on the patio and tank i'm sure will appreciate it won't you sir he's getting a uh, restless being indoors yeah yeah you are i'm talking about you <laughs> God, Tink is so funny. He is like the neediest dog. He needs to be like on your lap <laughs> at all times. <laughs> huh, buddy? Yeah, it's okay. been reading for a little bit now and I am 172 pages into Local Woman Missing. I feel like I'm about halfway through it at this point and this book is so interesting. It's so fast paced. I love that we're following from a few different points of views because it's making it go by so fast. If you didn't know anything about what this book is about, it's about how this woman Shelby went missing in this small town and then like 10 days later another woman and her child went missing in the same small town and then 11 years later the daughter, like the six-year-old daughter that was missing is found and so we're trying to figure out if they're like connected in any way or if it's just like a weird coincidence and it's so wild because part one of this book is about like 50 pages long and we're following from the point of view of the six-year-old girl but it's in the present day so it's like 11 years later and this book it's just so intense like since the beginning it has been so intense and I have so many different theories about what's going on and I'm just like so excited and so hyped about it So I'm really glad I decided to pick this one up today and it's just reading so quick Like I honestly just want to finish this tonight when I get home because I have to know what's going on <laughs> But as of right now, I am getting ready to go to my parents house. It is Memorial Day today So we're gonna have like a little barbecue at my parents house and stuff she and Frank were still married, by the way. She denies any involvement, but admit to sending- It has been some hours since I have been home, but I have not yet been reading. <laughs> because tonight we actually watched the series finale of Mayor of East Town, and it was so, so freaking good. That show is incredible. If you're looking for a good, like, thriller mystery TV show, then check it out. It's on HBO Max, and it has Kate Winslet in it. And anyways, um, I have finally been reunited with Project Hail Mary. My sister brought it home from work tonight, but I think I'm actually going to try and finish Local Woman Missing before jumping back into Project Hail Mary, just because I feel like this one's reading really fast and because I feel like I need to know what the heck is going on in this book right now. Um, it is already like 11.30 and I don't think I'm gonna be able to stay up too late reading tonight, unfortunately, because I have a really early day at work tomorrow. I mean, I'm waking up at 8 a.m., which is just, it's just early for me, you know? I'm not a morning person. So um, since it's already 11.30, I think I'm only gonna read for probably like an hour and then try to go to bed. Last night, I got up to page 258 of Local Woman Missing and I barely, have like the tiniest little chunk left but i was so tired and now it's like 8 30 in the morning and i'm freaking so tired but i'm going to work like all day today i'm bringing it in case i get a break but i'm not gonna leave it at work this time it's not happening wait is that video <laughs> i think if it says record does that mean it's video yes oh so it's taking a video right now yeah oh perfect <laughs> Oh, perfect. wait, I'm not upside down though. This is like per like the that's camera's upside down. But we're you know? well, uh, oh <laughs> There we go oh. Beautiful. Wow. I got it to work. Oh, I should be your technician. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> There'll never be any down. issues wait up or down. Up and down Well, I mean, I mean the words are upside down, but I figured it was like, you know hieroglyphics or something what? We just had smoothies some icy Pink shakes. Lemonade slushy. Oh, yeah. These are dope. McDonald's. I already From finished From McDonald's. Mine. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to have the label out. I'm not like yeah. experienced enough with this. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's new shit, you know? New shit? Mm -hmm. Wait, how new is this? Mm -hmm. 
I thought you like followed them daily. Like I every day you McDonald's. roll through the drive-thru and you're like, hey, what's new? No. <laughs> I haven't gone to McDonald's in like months. But I went the other night and I regretted it so bad. <laughs> I like the way that you like the way you like the way you like the I don't think anyone like gets McDonald's and they're like, wow, that felt great. I know. You always <laughs> you're regret just, it. You're desperate. You're like, I need food and I have no yeah. time. <laughs> Nine out of ten times you'll regret it. <laughs> you're like, shit. Mm -hmm. I don't I can't remember the last time I was like, oh yippee. <laughs> that worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. These are good though. So, those are good. I dig it. Yeah. It's really hot today, so I'm sorry for the sound of the fan in the background, but like it's 76 degrees in my room still, which I know isn't that hot, but Oh my god, it's only June 1st and I'm like over summer already. Like I really don't like summer. I know I sound like a little bitch complaining about the heat, but like earlier today it got up to like 87 degrees, which is hot for Washington, okay? We don't have an air conditioner in our apartment. And you know, when you work in a restaurant and it's really hot, it just sucks because the ovens are hot, there's no circulation, and it's just like you're in it all day. So that was a struggle. But anyways, I wanted to let you know that I finished Local Woman Missing. I actually didn't get a chance to read it while I was on break today, but as soon as I got home, I got sent home kind of early tonight because it was pretty slow. And then as soon as I got home while I was eating dinner, I just had the book next to me and I was just like reading, flipping the pages. And I feel like I got through the end of this so quickly because the ending just reads like really fast. It was so good. It was so unexpected, so surprising. I thought I had it all figured out and there were like multiple shocking things about this ending. Like I did not see a lot of this coming. I will warn you because I was kind of taken off guard by it that there are some kind of graphic and intense labor scenes of like women giving birth and stuff. I mean, our main character in this book, Meredith, she is a doula. I believe that's how you say it, but she is like the person that helps the women through the birthing process. Like she is there, she is in it with them. And so, I mean, it makes sense why there would be scenes like this in this book, but there was like one scene in particular where I was very on edge and it was really intense. So just a fair warning about that going in, but uh, wow, this book was so surprising. I did not see any of that ending coming. Like I was completely shocked by all of it and I think I'm gonna have to give this book five stars like I have zero complaints about it which is just so exciting because I previously read a book by this author and I'm pretty sure it was like a one star book or maybe a two star book I just really didn't enjoy it so I thought maybe I would have to write this author off but this book just completely proved me wrong and I'm so glad that I ended up buying a physical copy of this because I actually really enjoyed it and so um yeah i'm very excited about this and it's nice because it's early enough in the night right now that i think i can stay up for a little bit reading project hail mary hi good morning i wanted to let you know that i am now 215 pages into project hail mary i only read like a little bit last night and then i woke up this morning and while i was eating my breakfast i read a little bit more this morning while I am still really enjoying it, I feel like I've kind of hit a point in the book where it's starting to feel a little bit slow. And I'm like, ah, like I really wanted to finish this today. Like, I don't know, I had it in my brain that I would like finish this book today, but I'm like barely even halfway through it. And this book is five, like nearly 500 pages. This is when I really wish I had access to the audiobook because especially with something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, like this heavy sci-fi stuff, I really wish I had the audiobook to help me push through some of the slower parts of this book. But it sucks because I don't have Audible and this audiobook is only available through Audible, which like, ugh, I hate when books do that. So for now, um, I don't have a ton of plans today. My sister is working until four and then I think we might be going to get our nails done later, which will be exciting because this will be like the first time getting my nails done in like about a year and a half. Like I haven't had my nails done since we went to New York, which was the end of 2019. So yeah, it should be a fun time, but for now, I'm just going to focus on reading this book today and trying to get through as much of it as I can. <laughs>
Um, it's been a couple of hours and I wanted to update you that I have been reading so much today I feel like I'm on page 362 now and I have about like 110 pages left which I'm really excited about because I wasn't sure this morning if I was going to be able to finish this today or not but now I feel like I can totally finish this today I mean if not by tonight and like that's so exciting you know you just got to believe in yourself but oh my gosh I feel like now I'm enjoying this even more than I was before because I really loved like the first 100 pages but then somewhere around between like the pages 100 to 200 I felt like the story was starting to drag just a little bit or it was getting a little bit like science heavy and really like flashback heavy and I just wasn't totally invested in the flashback chapters at least for those particular pages I wasn't but now I'm still really invested in the flashback chapters now I'm really invested in what's happening with our character and it's so challenging to even talk about this book even vaguely without spoiling anything for you so I am not going to talk about anything specific that's happening. I just love reading books that take place in space because it just reminds me like of how vast the universe is and I've always really loved astronomy in school like I took an astronomy class in college and learning about space is just like the most fascinating shit like it makes you feel so small and microscopic and it's just amazing to imagine what's out there and I just love books that are kind of like interstellar like this just that just kind of like explore the possibilities of what could be out there it just makes my brain and like my astronomy loving brain like fucking light on fire like I love it so much so even though this book definitely had its more slow dense sci-fi e moments I'm still really enjoying where it's going right now I feel like the action has definitely picked back up again and I am just so excited to see where this goes uh! there was also like one part that almost just made me cry like I didn't even think I cared and like I do Oh my god, it's amazing. It's so good. I just I want to finish it so bad. Hello It's been a few hours and I have my windows closed because it's so fucking hot outside today. But look look. I Had to get them um super short because I wear contact lenses, but like oh my god They're so cute. I've never had white acrylics before. I'm kind of obsessed. Let's fucking go. Oh my god My nails kind of match this cover Sorry, the fan is on, so it's quite loud, but hopefully, I only have 110 pages left. Hopefully I can just bust this out right now. I'm so excited. Hello. Um, so it's been a couple of hours. It's about 11 o'clock at night right now. It's still really hot in my room. It's like 78 degrees, so I just took a shower to like wash my hair and changed into like a cooler outfit so that I can go to bed with my hair wet and hopefully not totally die of heat throughout the night but i wanted to let you know that i just finished reading project hail mary i finished reading this about an hour ago and i feel like i have to give this five stars like i just loved it i loved it just so fucking much i know you're probably like why are you gonna give it five stars because you were just complaining that it was slow earlier but like the way that this book went like there was a plot twist that i did not see coming that i was completely taken off guard by and the ending of the story was actually really surprising like i did not see it heading in that direction at all and i just thought it was so beautiful and it was actually so much more beautiful and profound and sweet than i was expecting it to be i don't know i just want to say i'm a huge fan of the main relationship that happens in this book it's just hard because i can't talk about this book like literally at all without spoiling you so i really don't want to say too much about it but i'm just so stoked that i ended up enjoying this like i feel like i enjoy the plot of this book even more than i enjoyed the martian because this book really just appeals to my personal taste like i really love the main characters kind of like dry sarcasm and humor in this book and I am so glad that Ryan Gosling is playing the lead in this movie adaptation because he is just perfect. Like he has that perfect, like he will nail this dry sarcasm character. And I just can't wait to see how they're going to make this movie because I have a lot of questions about how they're even going to do this because what? Um, but yeah, there were several moments towards the end of this book where I nearly cried. Like I couldn't believe how much I ended up caring 
about these characters. <laughs> it's just wild, you know? I mean, I love, you know, I love books that take place in space. I love the exploration of space. I love the idea of like time relativity and how, you know, like years and years and years can pass on Earth when you're in space. It just reminds me a lot of like Interstellar in that way too. I honestly feel like this book reminded me a lot of Ad Astra for some reason. Like it was giving me a lot of similar vibes to that movie and I loved that movie so much too. I think this is one of my favorite things that I've read so far this year. Like I just really, really loved it. So that was a complete delight. I mean, it's not like I expected to dislike it but I was definitely getting nervous earlier today because I felt like I was starting to get bored around like the 200 page mark and I was like oh no because since it's almost 500 pages I was like this is gonna take me a lot longer to get through than I thought it would but like those last 300 pages just flew by like so good yeah anyways um now it's just a little bit past 11 o'clock at night and i just found out tonight that i have to go to a meeting tomorrow at work at 9 a.m so i have to be up at 8 a.m for that which <laughs> cool we've already discussed i'm not a morning person i don't like to get out of bed before 10 a.m but i think because I have to go to bed here pretty soon. I think I'm just going to start to listen to the audiobook for One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston because I have the audiobook on my phone. It's from Libro. It was actually an ALC that they sent out last month that I never got to. So I think I'm going to just start that tonight and listen to it until I want to go to bed and then I'll let you know all of my thoughts in the morning. <laughs> Hello, good morning. It's not really morning anymore. I mean, it's like 10.30 now, but had an early morning. I just got done with like the meeting and everything at work. And I wanted to let you know that I'm 25% into the audio for one last stop. Just as expected, I'm really enjoying this so far. I forgot, um, cause all I knew about this book going into it is that it's a romance between two girls, which is, you know, exciting because her last book was a romance like it was a male male romance so i was pretty excited to see casey mcquinston writing a female female romance um but something that i forgot about this book is that there's like this magical element to it because well i love that it takes place in new york first of all like freaking amazing and then i forgot that there's this like magical aspect to it because the girl finds out like she's she meets this girl on like the subway in new york and she slowly starts to discover that this girl is like stuck on the subway or something or like she can't get off the subway she's like stuck in time that's mentioned in the description of the book by the way that's not like a spoiler or anything but i totally forgot that this book has that so i'm totally curious about this like almost this added mystery of like why is she stuck on the subway and like what is going on so that's really cool and also the romance i mean it feels a little bit insta lovey but i think it's because we're only following from the point of view of the one girl and she's just like instantly really really attracted to this girl on the subway so it's a really cute romance though for the most part so i'm just gonna keep listening to it um this morning on the way home hello it's like six o'clock at night now and like nothing today has gone exactly to plan i was so fucking tired that i ended up taking a nap for like two hours I think anytime it starts to get really hot out like this, I just get really drained of energy very quickly and I just haven't been sleeping that well because it's been so hot. And today's the first day, I mean, it's still hot today, but it's not as hot as it's been like the last two or three days. So um, I was able to sleep a little bit this afternoon. Um, <laughs> I wanted to let you know that I have been listening to One Last Stop on audio, um, like on and off today. I actually ended up having to go and do some grocery shopping this afternoon because we have absolutely nothing. So I did that and I've been listening to the audiobook all day while I've been doing stuff. I did laundry and like cleaning stuff and I'm 58% of the way through the audiobook. And so yeah, I'm I'm still really enjoying it. I actually like um, this whole like time, I don't even know if it's like time travel or like what, but I really like this uh, kind of like magical aspect in the plot. I just think it's like really interesting and it makes it really unique. I'm not like, like the romance is cute, but I'm not like obsessed with it, I guess, the way that I was with like Alex and Henry in Red, White, and Royal Blue, but I mean, it's a cute romance. It's looking to be like a four star book for me. I also low key, this isn't important, but low key, I just filmed my first ASMR video and I'm uh, rendering and uploading it now. And I'm just like so excited. Like the ASMR channel, it's a thing, it's happening. I can link it down below, but it's called Wildest Dreams ASMR. And I'm just so excited to finally start an ASMR channel. Ooh. <laughs> Hello.
hello it's like midnight and yes i'm wearing the same <laughs> shirt and outfit that i wore last night to bed but don't judge me um and i just wanted to let you know i've been listening to one last stop literally all night <laughs> like when i was making dinner tonight and then when i came in here earlier and was laying in bed and i finished the audiobook and I've got to say, I did end up really enjoying this book. I do think I'm going to give it four stars. Um, like my friend Katie said, it didn't slap quite as hard as Red, White, and Royal Blue, but it was still a really cute and unique story. I really did adore the female-female romance that was happening in this book, and I really did like our main character, August. I really liked the added mystery in the book with like the whole subway thing, like the girl stuck on the subway thing I thought was really interesting. And I also thought August, like she had a really interesting family story that was happening in this book. It wasn't like the main thing, but it was happening like on the sidelines in this book. And I just thought that added a really cool aspect to the story as well. Hello, what's up? What's happening? It's been 24 hours since I last saw you. It is now Friday night and I had a very busy, very long day at work today. Like it was very long. My feet hurt so bad. Like I'm just so tired. Um, and it's about 11.30 at night right now. And I decided that tonight it's happening. I'm starting Malibu Rising tonight. And I'm just, I'm so nervous and excited. I'm so excited because Taylor Jenkins Reid is probably my favorite author. Like she's probably my number one. She's probably like the number one author that I recommend to people. Like Evelyn Hugo is just like probably my favorite book of all time. The fact that this book follows, I mean from what I know, it follows one of the husbands from the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It follows his four children in the 80s. Why is it out of focus? What are you doing? I'm talking. I love the fact that this takes place in the 80s. I love the fact that it takes place in Malibu, California. And I do think that there's LGBT characters in this book because I keep seeing this book pop up on everyone's pride book recommendations. So, oh my god, I'm just, <laughs> I'm so excited. But also people keep telling me to like lower my expectations. And so for that reason, I am scared. I do also have access to the audiobook through Libro because Libro is fucking amazing and they made it one of their alc picks for the month of june so i have the audiobook i have the actual book and the book is narrated by julia whelan who i've heard from a lot of people mostly just katie but <laughs> i've heard that she's like one of the best audiobook narrators i think she also um she also narrates like Kristen hannah's audiobooks or something right yeah, she narrated the audiobook for Evelyn Hugo, for The Four Winds, for The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, for Beach Read. Like, she's narrated a ton. A really great update about the weather is that today it was actually kind of like cloudy and just like nice out today. And then like 20 minutes ago, I'm not even kidding, it was pouring rain in my window. I mean, I totally missed it and forgot to, forgot to film it so you could hear it. Fucking magical. Like, after a few days of just being really, really hot, it's actually, like, nice today. And it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. It's gonna be a cozy day just, like, reading tomorrow. Ugh, I'm so excited. Anyways, let's start Malibu Rising. Ah. Hi, good morning. Oh, sorry, I just woke up. Oh, fuck. I just dropped my hair tie. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that last night I got up to page 112 of Malibu Rising. And so far, I'm enjoying it. Am I enjoying it as much as I expected to? I don't know. Okay, one thing that I'm really, really enjoying so far about this writing is... I love the Malibu vibes in this book. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm actually from California and I grew up about like about an hour south south of like Malibu area. So I frequently visited Malibu kind of like growing up and especially as a teenager and oh my god, the Malibu vibes in this book are just everything. Like it literally feels like I'm on the freaking beach. I'm sorry, it's kind of dark in here. I just shut up. I just realized that it's kind of dark so I just turned on my light but but yeah it was literally like making me feel like I'm on the beach and it was making me miss California <laughs> like so badly um I also love that it's kind of following these four siblings 
and I like that each sibling is very unique and I can like easily tell them apart. It's also reminding me so much of Little Fires Everywhere, like especially with the way that this book starts because in the prologue of this book, it's like talking about how Malibu catches fire and like it's talking about all of the fires like, or all of the times Malibu has caught fire in the last like couple of years and then it ends with like because it is Malibu's nature to burn and then it kind of compares it to the oldest sibling uh Nina Riva and it's like just like she's like just like it's in her nature to set fire to things and walk away and so um I kind of like that metaphor right at the beginning with like the fire and so that totally reminded me of like Little Fires Everywhere and the fact that it's following like four siblings is very similar to Little Fires Everywhere. So like maybe Taylor Jenkins Reid just read Little Fires Everywhere and was like, I'm gonna make that my book but twist it so that it's in California and shit. I also um, really do like this kind of writing style where it's kind of like hinting to you at the future or like it's foreshadowing things will be like, oh but little did the siblings know this would be like their last time doing this together or something like that and you're like wait what does that mean like what's about to happen to them it's like kind of written in a way that's like that but i guess my number one thing with this book why i'm not really enjoying it as much as i thought i would is because there's flashback chapters of their parents mick and june from like the 1950s or like whenever when they got together back in the day and I don't know, I'm just personally finding their flashback chapters to be so incredibly boring and I just don't really care for Mick or June as characters, which is ironic because Mick is the character that I actually know from, from Evelyn Hugo, um, but I never really like cared a ton for his character anyways and even learning more about his backstory, I just don't really care for his character. And I don't know, like that's not really changing for me so far, like I still don't really care about Mick or June as characters. Um, but I am really interested and invested in the four siblings. I'm planning on wanting to- I just want to sit and read this book all day today. It is a Saturday and I have the day off of work today because it's actually my sister's boyfriend's birthday today. He's 25 today. Rachel and Obed are both going down to Seattle today to celebrate his birthday and they're gonna stay the night and so I am on tank watching duty all day today until tomorrow almost two o'clock in the afternoon now and i've just finished filming um i had to film like one youtube video and then i also filmed one asmr video that i'm really excited about but i just came back online really quick to check on my youtube because i was getting really close to hitting 60k and like holy fuck 60k what what i'm just i'm shook i'm so grateful i'm so freaking grateful like this is amazing thank you I still, yeah, I just, wow. I don't even, I don't have words for that. Um, I don't know how to say thank you enough for that. So thank you, <laughs> seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. now four o'clock in the afternoon and i've pretty much been listening to the malibu rising audiobook like all afternoon and i'm now 306 pages in i literally only have this tiny little chunk left and i'm 84 percent of the way through the audiobook and the only reason why i'm stopping right now is because my parents are on their way over and i'm gonna go out and meet them for dinner um i will admit that i wasn't a huge fan of the first like 200 pages of this book or i just thought it was kind of like slow and kind of boring i just wasn't a huge fan of like the flashback chapters of mick and june at least until like after a little while like i eventually did get invested in them but it took me a long time before i really cared about those flashback chapters and now ever since i hit part two it's pretty much just all present day like we're not really getting any flashbacks anymore which i actually don't mind like i really actually like the present day chapters a lot and i think for sure my favorite siblings to read about are Nina and Kit, which is like the two girls. I just find their chapters and like their storylines to be the most interesting. Um, but I also do like what's happening with the two brothers as well in this book. I'm just not as connected with their characters, like I just don't care for them as much. 
but um ever since page 200 i feel like the story has picked up a lot and now there's a lot more like family drama and i feel like it's building towards something which i really like because before it just kind of felt like this like we're just reading this story about this family and i just wasn't sure that i cared a whole lot like i don't know how to explain it it was just kind of boring in the beginning it was kind of boring but now i'm like okay it's getting juicy like things are picking up like shit's going down and i'm like rooting for Nina and for Kit so much. Like I just really adore both of their characters. I don't know why Nina's character kind of reminds me of Fiona from Shameless. Like she just gives me those vibes. And yeah, there was a reveal about Kit's character that I was like, sis, we all knew from the beginning, okay? <laughs> I'm just really living for the family drama that's happening in this story right now. And so I'm gonna go out to dinner and then I'm gonna come home and finish this book because it's getting really good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the first like 200 pages of this book, I was debating, like, I was like, God, this is probably gonna look like a three-star book for me. Like, I just, I'm not really feeling this. But now it's probably looking to be more like a four-star, but we'll see how this ending goes. Oh yeah. Woo! <laughs> Hello, it has been many hours since I last updated. I finished Malibu Rising. I finished it a couple of hours ago. And I think I've just been trying to gather my thoughts on how I feel about this book. But I think I'm going to end up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars, which isn't a bad rating by any means. I actually did really enjoy this book, but I don't think I loved it quite as much as I wanted to and as much as I expected to, which is like a tad bit disappointing. But I will say the ending of this book was really strong. Like I thought the last 100 pages were the best part of this book like that's where all of the family drama just like came to a head and the conversations were so powerful like every conversation i was like getting chills all over my body like the ending was just really really strong and i really really loved it i just i can't give this book higher than a four stars though because for the first 200 pages i was just so freaking bored for some reason like i don't know what it was i just didn't care a whole lot until like more than halfway through and then i really started to care for these characters so i mean i don't know maybe this is the kind of book that would be better on a reread because then i already know and love the characters but i don't know it's like i obviously i still really love this i'm giving it four stars there was a lot of things about the ending that surprised me and that really moved me and now tank's under the bed tank get out of there Tank. Hey, get out of there. Tank, get out. Oh my goodness. Get out of there. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. All right, so that is all. That is all of the things that have happened in this vlog. I am very surprised to say that Project Hail Mary was my favorite out of all of these books. That really surprises me because, you know, I really thought Malibu Rising or One Last Stop was gonna be like my favorite book of the year, like not even kidding, but Project Hail Mary totally surprised me. I think I had high expectations for this book after loving The Martian, but because I didn't like Artemis very much, I think I lowered my expectations a little bit going into this one. And just because I'm not a super, super active sci-fi reader. I read sci-fi from time to time, but usually it's not something I like want to scream about from the rooftops, like how much I loved it. But this book, I loved it so fucking much and I haven't been able to stop thinking about this book like the characters in this book are just everything and I just I really adored it like I loved it so much I've been talking about this book with my sister like every day because I'm like can you believe like how cool that is or how cute that is or like Ugh. I just loved it so fucking much and I'm so freaking stoked that this is going to be a movie with Ryan Gosling like what even the this is like all my dreams coming true like Ryan Gosling who is one of my favorite actors is gonna be in a movie adaptation of one of my favorite books I just I don't have words I'm so excited I'm gonna need like fucking oh, they're gonna need to like restart my horror after I see this film and then my second favorite is surprisingly Local Woman Missing, which this is so crazy because this wasn't even a book I was sure I wanted to read because I've read one other book from this author and I gave it like a one or two star, like it was not my favorite at all. But this book was so surprising and like I just, 
I just can't believe how much I love this. It's definitely one of my favorite thrillers of the year and it was everything that I love in a thriller. Oh my god. It was fantastic. It was so freaking good and I can't believe that I ended up enjoying this one more than the other two. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I feel like Malibu Rising and One Last Stop are pretty much tied for me. Really good four star books but I feel like I can't rate them higher than four stars. Sorry, the lighting is driving me crazy but it's so crazy because it's been about two or three days since I've finished Malibu Rising and I just feel like I'm already starting to forget this book like it just didn't really have a huge impact on me the way that I thought it would so I feel like I almost want to lower my rating to like a 3.5 after thinking about it even more I don't know I just didn't love this the way that I thought that I would like I genuinely thought this was going to be like the new like Evelyn Hugo status fave but I just didn't love it as much as I thought I would. Like, I still really enjoyed it, like, don't get me wrong, but I think I had way too high of expectations going into this, even after lowering my expectations a little bit. And as for One Last Stop, I mean, I did enjoy this book. Did I love it as much as I thought I would? P no, not really, but, but I still really enjoyed my time reading this. It just wasn't, like, a new all-time favorite the way that I was expecting it to be, like Red, White, and Royal Blue. It just didn't quite hit me as hard as that book. But I also feel like Alex and Henry just had better chemistry in that book because in one last stop some of it did feel kind of like insta lovey at times either way i'm just so stoked to have completed this reading vlog and get to read some of my most anticipated books of the year and you know there's still hope the riley sager book has not come out yet there is still hope that that will live up to the expectations i have for it now i'm extra scared because if that book doesn't live up to my expectations oof. I tend to have the not popular opinion that Malibu Rising is just okay. I feel like I've seen a lot of my friends already giving this five stars and really, really loving it. And if you love Malibu Rising, like, I'm so happy for you. Like, I wish I could feel what you feel, honestly. I just feel slightly underwhelmed by it, I guess, but... Yeah, but if you've read any of these books, please let me know what are your thoughts on them, or if you plan to read any of these books soon, let me know that as well. And thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye. What are we fighting for? I can't